One of the things that was bound to happen with this floating foundation structure, the other thing we had to deal with was a bit of a hasty start on a construction because the, uh, the without the foundation being laid and without knowing exactly, you know, not doing a full ground survey. And legally, these buildings have to be uh, supposedly non-permanent. So using these massive telephone pole logs, this is thicker than a regular telephone pole, uh, as foundation pieces, although on a deck I use a conventional deck block. That conventional deck block type thing, my opinion, was not reliable and not adjustable enough to be used on the rest of this. Now those, basically we upend the bag of cement, uh, dig a little bit up in the bag of cement, embed that pyramid block in, and then put a 4x4 on. The thing is this one settled a little bit. I wanted it that way so that water runs off the deck. So there's a little bit of slope there. Don't want to slope here. So originally, these two have been cut the same length. But for whatever reason, maybe because it was this tree here or something, this has been sinking and indenting in the ground a little bit. So using a high lift jack, originally it was just a couple of guys lifting the corner of the building. As we get more of the building in place, that becomes a little trickier. But as you can see, I can lift the jack. But a lot of what's happening is that the jack is sinking in the ground the way the post did. And as I jack this up, and I get this thing adjusted, maybe throw a little lube on there. We'll jack it up and throw another shim in until everything settles in. And then probably what I'll eventually do is jack it up here and here and replace this with a longer log once we know where this stops. Now we're building basically on a rock outcropping. It's just there had been enough foliage here for a while to build up some real soil. And, um, and we'll eventually redo that. But there's a lot of foundation support here. So... I don't expect there to be a collapsing issue on the, on the building. Over here I've added another shim. Um, the, you can see how the footprint of the jack sank a little bit there as I was, I was a jack in this corner of the building. What's happening on a <coughs> less severe basis is this piling sinking a little bit. Now, if I'd gone in and cast concrete and been really careful about the measurements and the levels at that level, what would have happened is the concrete would be cracking everybody would be all frustrated by doing this jack and piling thing and then finalizing the length of the pilings uh, once it's all settled i i think i've got a better system so here once i've jacked up a little bit i'm going to upgrade this to another shim and so <coughs> by adjusting all of that I can get right to construction without uh, without worrying too incredibly much about a foundation. And areas you really want to be concerned with that is like in Florida, where you're building mostly on sand. Here it was just a fluke that we had um, a little bit of softer material that we're building on, um, where it's definitely bedrock underneath. I mean, this is all rock out here. Uh, when I went to use a post hole uh, auger on this, I wasn't able to get very deep before I hit rock. That's why I went with these things as opposed to pilings and concrete. But uh, we'll keep going here. I'm going to find a shim to stick in that middle piece. And uh, we're, we're all in good shape now. Let's see here if I can, if I've gotten that wide enough to go with a straight 2x4 or if I use one of these decking pieces that is uh, basically two-thirds of a two-by. Yeah, so these are going to come out, and I'm going to stick one of those decking pieces in to uh, set all those shims.